Hi, I'm Dr. M. Krishna Patel, one of the interventional radiologists with the Vascular Institute at AMI, and today we're going to talk about prostate artery embolization. Prostate artery embolization is a minimally invasive technique to help treat benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH, typically causing significant urinary symptoms for men. The main indications for performing prostate artery embolization are typically an enlarged prostate causing symptoms related to urinary dribbling or difficulty maintaining a urinary stream, a weak stream, stopping and starting, feeling like you haven't been able to completely empty your bladder. Other indications for getting a prostate artery embolization can be hematuria or bleeding from your urine. Uh, that typically needs a workup to make sure you're not having bleeding from anywhere else. Prostate artery embolization compared to other prostate procedures does not go through the urethra. So there is no part of the procedure where we need to go in or through your penis. Everything is done transarterially or through the blood vessels that are supplying the prostate. Additionally, prostate artery embolization differs because it has minimal to no sexual side effects compared to some of the other surgical treatments for benign prostatic hyperplasia. The potential benefits of prostate artery embolization, other than the improvement in the urinary stream and the main symptoms that are causing you to come in, is that compared to other interventions, it has minimal recovery time. Typically, after the procedure, you're recovering for about two hours and then you're free to move about your day like normal. Uh, there are no sexual side effects related to the procedure, and there is no transurethral or transpenile course for the treatment. Significant risks or side effects associated with prostate artery embolization can be about a two to three day worsening of the symptoms you have. This is typically associated with swelling that can be induced in the gland when we take away the blood flow to the prostate. As you can imagine, when you strangle the blood flow to something, it doesn't really like that and has a little bit of an inflammatory response. We typically take care of this with uh, medications that help control those symptoms for two to three days and typically at least, uh, and typically within a week of the procedure, you are back to your baseline, if not already significantly improved from when you came in. Other risks or potential complications are something called non-target embolization or the particles that we use to shut down the blood flow to the prostate ending up anywhere else within the body. The risk is less than 1% of anything clinically significant causing an issue with non-target embolization and it's something that we are constantly looking out for using our imaging as we do the procedure. So things that you can expect before the procedure is the few days before the procedure, our nurses will give you a call to let you know exactly when to show up, what medications to start and stop and take before coming in, what time to arrive to our facility, and what time you can expect to get out of the facility. On the day of the procedure, uh, before coming in, you'll have nothing to eat or drink, so we can give you that twilight sedation or that conscious sedation medication. Uh, you will start some of the pre-medications that we will talk about during your consultation that help control the symptoms uh, related to post-embolization or, or the irritative symptoms that can happen immediately after the procedure. During the procedure, you should expect to be in a twilight sedation or a sleeping sedation state. You will not be under general anesthesia. Uh, you will have none of the risks associated with general anesthesia with you. There is no breathing tube. Um, sometimes we may even chat a little bit during the procedure if you happen to wake up. There is no pain associated with during or after the procedure. After the procedure, you can expect to be in our recovery area for approximately two hours. You will be doted upon by our nurses. Uh, usually a snack or a lunch is involved, and then you get to get out of here. So following a prostate artery embolization, there aren't really any significant lifestyle changes that you would be required to take. Uh, some folks can actually come off of their BPH meds, which is an added bonus, not having to take you know, an additional one or two pills every day. Another benefit of prostate artery embolization is it does not take away the ability to do any other procedures for the prostate. In fact, it can make additional procedures safer because your bleeding risk related to those procedures is much lower. So if you are in that two to 5% of folks that don't feel better enough after the procedure to be happy and, and you wanna pursue additional treatment, this doesn't take anything else off the table. Following prostate artery embolization, the vast majority of the literature says the symptom improvement lasts for about five to seven years. So after that standpoint, there is a small chance that you would need an additional embolization. Our body is really smart. The gland finds ways to steal blood flow from other areas of the pelvis 
and can start to regrow. That's the natural course of kind of everything in our body. Uh, fortunately, whatever blood vessel it's stealing that supply from, we can go in there in the future and help, and help by treating in the same manner that we did the initial procedure. Prostate artery embolization is extremely effective in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia and particularly in glands that are significantly larger. So glands that are larger than 80 grams or 80 cc's tend to have improved results with treatment efficacies approaching well over 90% for improvement in symptoms and near complete resolution of symptoms. Now there's some variability in terms of the data that was early on in the treatment of, of BPH with prostate artery embolization and some of that if we actually bore down into it is because they might have only treated from one side or the other side or not been able to get a complete treatment. But over the past few years with the continued advancement in technology, we have gotten much better at being able to get a complete embolization as, as we call it in terms uh, we've been we've gotten much better in getting a complete embolization of the gland and that's resulted in significantly improved outcomes. A good candidate for a prostate artery embolization is anyone who's really suffering from symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia with gland size typically greater than 60 or 80 grams. We have treated prostates that are smaller, but frankly, there are really good minimally invasive transurethral options that help in that population. And we know that the outcomes are much stronger and greater when the glands are larger. If you have any questions about prostate artery embolization or would like to have more information about the procedure, call us, come in to see me. I'd be happy to talk to you more about it. I'm Ram Krishna Patel. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any further questions, you can reach out to us at vi-ami.com.